Hello, this is Lucasfilms and Disney's negotiation. Alright, so the background, the Force and the magic. Who wouldn't love to be bought out by the empire called Disney? Well, it depends on how much you love your own work that you're willing to let someone else change it. This is the situation Lucas and his company, Lucasfilm, are faced with. While Disney has a great offer, it comes down to Lucas agreeing to the negotiation of Disney buying out his company, but possibly changing it in a better, wrong, or in different direction. So the problem. Lucas wants it to stay Star Wars, and Disney wants to make tweaks. The problem with this negotiation is that Lucas wants to see his vision of Star Wars come true. The way he did this was by getting the scripts and everything needed for future movies that Disney would create that he thought would not only benefit himself, but also enhancing Disney's potential buyers. The other problem is that Lucas is ready to retire at the age of 70 and needs someone to continue his legacy. For as he states, now time for me to pass Star Wars on to a new generation of filmmakers. The last problem is that Disney, before the negotiations, was already planning on making changes, which would be later discovered in 2015. So the negotiation. Lucas is heading for retirement. Disney is willing to pay handsomely. Disney gets all rights. Where we see the problems of this negotiation, where we see the where we see the problems of this negotiation, now we must discover what the negotiation entails. Lucas has been prepared to sell his company, reaching an old age and ready to retire, but ready to make sure his franchise stays the same. Disney is willing to pay Lucas $4.5 billion in cash and stock, a deal of a lifetime from an empire. This transaction not only gives them rights to Lucasfilm, but also gives Disney rights to LucasArts, Industrial Lights, Magic, and Skywalker Sound. In this deal, Lucas will also be given the duty of creative consultant to make sure the film stays in the right direction. Now the interests. Long-going relationship. Lucas stuck on the story. Disney wants to expand the audience. The interest for both parties you would think might be complex, but this has been a long-going relationship between both. For example, Disney World has a Star Wars weekend at their theme park while Lucas developed a Star Wars series for kids called The Clone Wars. You can already at this point start to see a relationship as both try to aim towards a younger crowd for a larger audience. But it goes deeper than that. As Lucas wants his franchise to stay to the story, to continue the path it's going down, while Wiz Disney wants to tweak it and involve more children as they have always done with their studio. To both parties, it's more than just money, it's more involvement with different audiences and a continuation of something magical and lasting. The Position So Disney will pay and keep employees, Lucas wants his writer and president to stay, more gain than loss. The position for both parties isn't complex either, nor is it not doable. Disney wants the rights to all Lucasfilm to continue the film for $4.5 billion in cash and stocks while being able to tweak the franchise, even though originally this was not stated in the negotiation and only revealed in 2015. Lucas' position is that he wants Star Wars to remain Star Wars, following the script he had prepared that he thought would be both beneficial to Disney and him, to also keep the writer um, that he specifically chose as well. While the positions aren't unique in any way, both parties have a lot to gain, and possibly something to lose in this deal. It comes down to, can we trust each other on these positions? So concepts from class, patience, tit for tat, and batna. It may not come to a surprise, it may not come as a surprise to you that Disney handled this negotiation with great care. When negotiating, you must be patient, as rushing too quickly will result in an undesirable outcome. Make sure both parties are getting something out of this, a tit-for-tat, something Disney played towards. As Lucas wanted his franchise to remain more towards his vision, Disney assured him that they would keep it in the line of his franchise and would even keep his same staff employed. There is nothing but cooperation. This receives more gains for both parties in this event. Lastly, Lucas had already developed a BATNA, a best alternative to negotiated agreement, by already having the future film scripts ready, ensuring the film would maintain its direction but also enhance Disney's buyers. So, what went well? Trust, Lucas is able to retire, Star Wars is able to go on, Disney can reach more audiences. It may be of no surprise of what went well. With Disney's buying power, you really can't say you weren't treated right. 
The fact these two giants have already been building a relationship over the years shows that this time was coming, and Lucas isn't disappointed as he now has $4.5 billion in cash and shares. This is what Lucas wanted, the continuation of Star Wars without him having to spend more, more and more time on these films. Even as his creativeness weakened over the years, which he started to become criticized for, allowed him to let someone else give it a breath of fresh air. For Disney, this meant more revenue, more audiences, and at the same time assured Lucas that nothing would change. The negotiation was positive, the trust had already been built, Disney was patient, and understood Lucas's concerns. But what went wrong? If even something went wrong in this negotiation, regardless, Lucas was pressured to sell regardless of the outcome. While Disney had nothing to lose among their conquest of companies, Well, Lucas wanted to focus on keeping his rider. Disney had other intentions, and already had someone in place to replace Lucas's rider. Secondly, Lucas might have been strong-armed in the deal, for if he knew Disney was going to make billions more after, way more than he was offered, he might have been able to negotiate a higher buying price. Disney, in the meantime, were discouraged with the idea of having to keep certain people in certain positions instead of replacing them with their own people. Disney had a strong batna, while Lucas did not entirely think his own through, and was probably clouded by emotions. So the agreement. The success, George makes shares, creative consultant, and story continues. The agreement was a success to an extent. It was a success because Disney was able to later increase the studio's revenue with the movies after uh, such titles as The Force Awakens, Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, and The Last Jedi, making $2 billion for the first, and $1 billion for the last two stated in the global box office, but at the same time, the movie, Solo, A Star Wars Story, made only under $400 million. It's not all bad and gloom, though. While there has been some shakes, Disney is blowing up as their shares are up at 127% since purchasing Lucasfilm. This is definitely an agreement that will foster a strong relationship way past Lucas's lifetime. As with the current success, you cannot deny that Lucas was given a great deal, not only with money, even though it could have been more, but still being able to be a creative consultant for Disney, which will help keep that spice in Star Wars we all know and love. Thank you.